Hello there everyone and welcome to John Drinks and today we're going to be looking at how to make a pumpkin spice latte martini. Now that will sound one of two things. One, really pretty good if you're into pumpkin spice lattes and two, kind of complicated. So first off I'm going to quickly say yeah it's going to be nice and also this is actually going to be really freaking easy because, and this is the kicker, we're not using any pumpkin in this. So there's not so much as a, a sniff of a pumpkin going anywhere near this. And a lot of people are going to balk at that, but I'm going to explain myself. And when you see how quick this is, I think you're probably going to not give a shit, if I'm bluntly honest. Um, because it's going to replicate the flavour pretty much as accurately as we can do, given we're changing the form factor. So, we should quickly meet our star players. There's a ceramic pumpkin there. He's nothing to do with this. He's just there for decoration to prove that it's October when I'm filming this and it's all Halloween-y and spoopy like that. Um, but the first one that we've got um, is this fella. This is a spice rum and this is where we're going to be getting basically all of that pumpkin spice flavour from. Pumpkin spice lattes are a funny thing. Up until about five years ago, they didn't have any pumpkin in them anyway. Basically, the only reason they put pumpkin in it was because people were getting a bit narky at the fact that there wasn't pumpkin in it and because there was pumpkin in the name, despite the fact that it's not a pumpkin pie latte, it's a pumpkin spice latte. So technically speaking, they could have just been like, yeah, that's what it is, shut up. But they didn't do that. They put a very minuscule amount of pumpkin in the recipe. The amount of pumpkin that is in a pumpkin spice latte is so negligible there's not really any point in it being there other than to say, hey, we're putting it in to shut you up. Please keep buying it. That's the only reason it's there, all right? So that's my reason for not using it today. Plus, I've seen, I've looked at a couple of recipes online for kind of a similar idea and the amount of pissing about with pots and pans and purees and sugar syrups and all that crap, it's not worth it. So this is just a, a rum spin on a flat white martini. So if you already know how to make one of those, you could probably go and do something else now because that's all this is. So this is our spice rum. The one that I've gone with is dark matter for the simple reason that this is super concentrated when it comes to spice profile. It's super heavy on ginger, nutmeg, clove, all those kind of things. It's a real punch you in the face spiced rum. You can use other spiced rums if you want. Um, Bacardi Fuego would be another good option. Um, if you've got like a sort of an, an artisanal spice rum that's heavy on the spice, remember that. It's, it's got to kind of work with this. It's got to be diluted down and still come through because at the end of the day, pumpkin spice puree mixed stuff at Starbucks is a concentrate. So that's essentially what you're subbing in. So remember that when we're doing this. Next thing I've got, you can use Bailey's. That's fine. This is a whiskey cream. It's called Aaron Gold. Um, how I tell people about this stuff is it's basically Bailey's if they started giving a shit. Um, this stuff's next level. I, I didn't think it could be that different, but oh my god, it's, it's really good. It's really fucking good, guys. Um, I will probably do a full review of this at some point, but just kind of with the holidays coming up and stuff, you know, if you if you want a whiskey cream, you're like, oh, I want to treat myself a little bit, uh, get this because it's basically the same price anyway, to be honest. <laughs> so you might as well just get the slightly nicer stuff because the pretty comparable, to be honest. Um, and we're going to be doing a bit of espresso in here as well. There's already some espresso in my shaking beaker mug thing. Um, the reason for that is simple. I made it earlier on an AeroPress and then I've let it cool down. With using something like Bailey's or Aaron Gold or Edredow cream or whatever your selected whiskey cream of choice is, or a little homemade one maybe, make sure you chill the espresso. Don't use hot espresso because then you're going to start getting splitting and curdling as it doesn't go well. It's not good. Um, if you want to know how to make sort of an espresso shot on an AeroPress or a mocha pot or how to do sort of espresso at home or espresso style at home, there'll be a couple of videos down below. They're not mine, but that's okay. I'm not a coffee expert at the end of the day. So if I can use those videos, you can as well. So they're fine. So some pros are going to go downstairs and be like, hey, here's how you make espresso style at home. If you live like upstairs from a coffee shop, happy fucking days, you're way ahead of all of us. But if not, there are ways of doing it that, you know, don't break the bank. So let's, let's just build this because I think the quickest and easiest way I can demonstrate that this is easy is just to make it. So 
Ratio is really simple. You want two to one. So you've got two, one, one. Okay. So I'm going to go in first. I'm going to go in first with the rum. So 25 mil of that going in. Like I said, I've already measured out 25 mil of the espresso. That's already in there. So the coffee is in there. Don't forget about it. This is why I don't normally do cocktail videos because they are very difficult for me to shoot in any capacity. And I didn't feel like shooting everything and then doing a voiceover. Frankly, I couldn't be fucked with it. So this is how we're doing this. Uh, and I thought it's quick enough. It doesn't really matter. Uh, and then next, we're going to do 50 mil. I could use the bottom, but because we've still got a bit of rum in this, I'm going to do two on here just to make sure I get the most of that spice out. Because I'm funny like that and I hate wasting residue. I'm, I'm weird, I know. And two. All right, cool. Now then, because again, this is a difficult setup and it's not really optimized for cocktail making, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna chuck some ice in this, cap it off, shake it, strain it, and then present the finished product to you and then we'll get on with our lives. Ta-da, we're back. Uh, so, I've shaken it, I've strained it, I've put it into a little coop. I did get a Starbucks cup because I thought that would be a cool visual joke and then I was like, no, I wanna put it in a coop instead, so I. I served it like this. Uh, and then I've just chucked a couple of coffee beans on top. Uh, the cat is now awake because when I went to go get the coffee beans, he thought that they were treats. So you might hear crunching in the background. That's just him catting about, don't mind him. But the big question, is this sort of like a pumpkin spice latte-ish kind of? Do you know, I don't say that I'm a genius often enough, but I'm a fucking genius. That's so fucking accurate, it's disturbing. <laughs> so I got a PSL today, just so I kind of had the it fresh in my head. And I was like, yeah, it's just kind of like a blank of spice and sweetness. And the coffee's kind of neither here nor there. It's, it's what it is. It's, yeah. If you like pumpkin spice lattes, and most of us are basic enough that we do, this gets disturbingly close. Um... I was a little bit worried about the dark matter being overwhelming. It's actually perfect. And I don't want to give too much credit to one particular brand because obviously there are other spice rums out there. But if you happen to get a bottle of this, you know, you can get a 50 CL like I did. Um, it's worth the money. And you know what? It's actually versatile. <laughs> this works. This totally works. This is, this is a fucking pumpkin spice latte. Jesus, I don't believe I've pulled this off. It's an alcoholic pumpkin spice latte. Yeah, all that kind of like homogenous spice blend thing is coming through. It's thick and creamy. It tastes like the whipped cream is with it as well. If you're one of those people that doesn't get the whipped cream, and I don't because there's already enough calories on that shit as it is, it does taste like the whipped cream is in it without there being any whipped cream there. This is banging. Um, it could obviously be a lucky happenstance with the Aaron and the dark matter because I've not tested it on like Bailey's and Captain Morgan's. I wouldn't recommend Captain Morgan's for this because that's primarily sugar with like a bit of spice in there. Something like this where you, you have at least an idea of the spice that's gone into it. Do it. Uh, but yeah, that's how to make a pumpkin spice latte martini with no fucking pumpkin whatsoever. Uh, thumb this video if this was informative uh, and comment down below. What other Starbucks menus should be martinis? Doesn't have to be Starbucks, you know, anything really. Could you could you make a unicorn? What was it? A unicorn and frappuccino? Those things that drove baristas to the point of depression? Those blue and pink things, yeah. Yeah. I mean I got some branding out of that drink, so you know that was something, I guess. Anyway, uh do join me next time where I'll be drinking something else. <laughs>